Hey everyone, my name is Sahil and in this video we're going to continue our series on earthing and lightning protection. In today's video specifically, we're going to talk about earth mats and how they're used to protect substations. An earth mat is a very simple product. It's a mesh formed using bare metallic conductors and buried in shallow soil to provide better safety from touch and step potential. As a result, earth mats are an essential part of the grounding system implemented in substation, production plants, industrial areas and other kinds of applications where high power handling occurs. But the fundamental question is, why do substations require earth mats instead of just a normal earthing system that is used everywhere else? Substations are high voltage electrical facilities used for power transmission. Therefore, they require a secure and reliable earthing system. As per IEEE 80, the standard for safety in AC substation grounding, there are two main objectives in substation earthing. Those two objectives are, firstly, to ensure the safety of persons in the substation and its vicinity. Secondly, to provide easy and secure dissipation of electric current under normal and fault conditions without impacting the continuity of electrical service from the substation. So, how do earth mats meet both of these requirements? Firstly, earth mats protect from shock hazards caused by touch potential and step potential, thus protecting humans. But what are touch and step potential? Touch potential is the potential difference between the hand of a person touching an electrical charged object and their feet touching the earth at ground potential. Step potential is formed when the feet of a person is within one meter distance of an energized grounded object on the substation floor. Here, the person is not touching any object that has a fault current, but there is a potential difference between their feet. In both these cases, the person becomes the path for the fault current to pass through and this results in electrocution. Thus, when an earth mat is used in a substation, the metallic object or the equipment and the substation floor on which the person is standing are at the same potential. This makes the substation safe from touch and step potential and meets the first criteria of ensuring safety of humans by protecting against touch and step potential. Secondly, the large surface area of metal to soil allows for the easy and secure dissipation of electric current. So, what does an earth mat look like under a substation? A substation earthing system includes an earthing grid, which is a metallic mesh or mat buried within the ground. This mat connects all the equipment and conducting structures as you can see in the picture. It is basically a network of conductors forming a continuous low impedance path for the fault current to flow into the ground. Earth mats are generally placed in critical operating areas frequently accessed by people. It is laid at a shallow depth with a high resistance surface material like gravel above it. A low resistance level is maintained beneath the earth mat with the help of earthing compounds or watering. This helps in the easy flow of fall currents deep into the soil. In a substation, earth mats are connected to the following objects. The neutral point in the system through its independent earth, equipment framework and other non-current carrying parts of the electric equipment in the substation, all extraneous metallic frameworks that are not associated with any equipment, for example, handles of operating pipes, fences if they are within 2 meters from the earth mat. We can see that earth mats provide earth connections to all metallic objects thereby keeping the surfaces at absolute earth potential and thus safe for handling. In addition to the earth mats, earth electrodes are also driven deep into the ground at various points in the substation. They connect to the equipment bodies, earth mats, metallic structures and neutral points. All these together constitute a secure earthing system for the substation. But why do we need all this safety? What even causes a fault in a well-constructed substation? Faults in a substation can be caused by many factors. 
These can include internal power faults, switching surges, equipment failures, or even direct or indirect lightning strikes. The potential caused by lightning strikes is normally not easy to handle because they result in a high magnitude current at a short interval of time. Earth mats are also connected to lightning masks and surge protectors to help the easy discharge of over voltages through them. Thus, earth mats are used as part of the earthing circuit to dissipate all the fault currents into the ground. The next basic question is, how are earth mats designed? The commonly used materials for making an earth mat include copper conductors, copper clad steel and galvanized steel. Earth mats are designed based on the calculations and requirements given in standards such as IEEE 80. It is done taking into consideration the soil resistivity and other geographical factors that can impact the earth resistance values. The power handling capacity and structural strength of the substation are also important factors in designing the earth mat for a substation. Software such as ETAP, XGS and CDEGS are used in designing earth mats using real-time inputs. Finally, let me list out how earth mats help in substation grounding. Firstly, Earth mats ensure safety against electric shocks by keeping the earth potential in the switchyard within safe limits under all earth fault conditions. Secondly, earth mats provide an efficient neutral earthing or ground connection to all connected equipment. Thirdly, earth mats discharge the over voltage from overhead lightning mass or ground wires to the earth for providing a ground path for surge arresters. Fourthly, earth mats provide earth connections to the substation equipment and other non-current carrying metallic parts in the substation. Fifthly, earth mats ensure the safety of personnel and the general public from touch and step potential by maintaining an equip potential plane. Finally, they maintain the earth resistance value at desired levels. Thus, we can conclude by emphasizing that the earth mat is one of the most essential parts of the earthing system in a substation. I hope this video has given you a better understanding of why earth mats are so important in substation earthing. Subscribe to our channel for more videos on earthing, lightning protection and electrical safety in general. Feel free to comment any questions that you may have about substation earthing. You can also comment on the topics you would like us to cover next. Again, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Click on the bell icon to be notified of our next video. Thanks.